six times Ash died in Pokemon Explained. From freezing to death in outer space to drowning to his death, these are all six times Ash Ketchum has died in Pokemon. And if you stick until the end, you will really be mind blown by a crazy theory. But first, let's start with the most painful death of them all. See, this death was so painful, I cry myself to sleep every night thinking of it. This is Victini, and Ash died saving this Pokemon. In the Victini movies, Ash developed such a strong bond with Victini, so when it came down to Ash saving himself or Victini, guess who Ash chose? Himself! No, I'm just kidding, he chose Victini, but that's what makes this death so touching. In the movie, this guy Damon trapped Victini to steal its powers all as a part of his plan to uproot this castle from this position and return it to its rightful position, which is way over here. But this just led to a whole lot of chaos that set the castle on course for outer space with only Ash, Pikachu, and Victini on board. Ash tried to escape with Victini, but these giant pillars of protection were not having that. They locked Ash in as the castle drifted into the very chilly atmosphere of outer space where Ash couldn't breathe. Man, this place was so cold. Ash froze to death in three seconds. The part that really broke my heart was when Ash was apologizing for not keeping his promise to Victini. I bet Victini thought to itself, you're not dying on me, Ash, because the heat from its searing shot revived Ash instantly. Dang, that was so close. Pokemon show really knows to be intense sometimes. This death is far from the first time Ash died. Let me take you back to that time Ash got crushed to death by this. See, all Ash wanted was to get a ghost type Pokemon so he could defeat this mean girl. So he ventured to the Tower of Terror in Lavender Town with his gang. At the tower was a Haunter, Gengar, and Ghastly. And all they did was mess with poor Ash and his gang. The pranks the ghost Pokemon played was hella creepy. And it scared Brock and Misty so much that they ran away from the tower. But only Ash went back in because his victory against this girl was more important to him than his own life. In the tower with his Pikachu, Haunter haunted Ash and Pikachu. Then Gengar came along and smacked Ash with a paper fan. And after that, the Pokemon made jokes to entertain Ash. That's kind of funny if you ask me. <laughs> but Ash did not find it funny and it broke the ghost Pokemon's hearts. Just as they were about to sink into the ground, Ash and Pikachu launched after them to catch the sad Pokemon, but they were too late. They crashed to the ground, causing the walls and ceiling of the raggedy castle to crack over for the chandelier above them to fall and crush them. What really killed Ash was the electric shock that came after the chandelier had already fallen, which just makes this death quite mind-boggling. Let me explain. So Ash can get shocked by Pikachu a million times and survive, but an electric shock is where he draws the line? Or Pikachu, an electric-type Pokemon that is capable of generating a trillion volts, can get shocked to death? Something's not right here. Getting crushed by a chandelier is definitely a rocky way to die, but not as rocky as getting turned into a stone. The second time my man's Ash died, he got that Medusa treatment. It all went down in the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. And by went down, I mean chaos went down. This movie was just so chaotic, the better part of it was a whole night of Pokemon fighting with their clone all because of Mewtwo. Ash kinda already had a death wish in this movie, because before the whole battle started, he punched Mewtwo with his bare fist twice. But it wasn't until the last stand between Mew and Mewtwo, Ash finally cashed in on his death wish. He heroically ran into the two legendary Pokemon's blast and died. This scene turned on the waterworks. Not only my waterworks, but also the waterworks of the Pokemon that witnessed his death. Pikachu tried his best to revive Ash by using electricity, but it just made all the Pokemon in the area cry even more. If only tears could bring back the dead, am I right? All the Pokemon cried so much that their tears brought Ash back from the dead. That is outrageous. Know what? I will turn into stone in five seconds and Pokemon tears cannot save me. But do you know what can save me? You smashing that, uh, subscribe button. Whew, thanks. I feel better now. At least I wasn't getting eaten by this blog thingy like Jesse, James, Max, Brock, May, and Kid were in the movie. Lucario and the mystery of Mew. But this isn't about them. This is about 
Ash. All Ash ever wanted was to protect this tree from the beginning. But what did he get in return? He got consumed by its white blood cells. That's right, these shiny crystals are orange blob thingies in disguise, and they are the white blood cells the tree of beginning produces as antibodies to protect itself against parasites. And it took every human that it saw as a threat. Even Ash. These blobs ate, and the humans left no crumbs. Only traumatized, trainerless, heartbroken pocket monsters. If not for Mew, everyone that got eaten by this blob would have remained erased from existence. And we would never see Ash ever again. See, Mew used its powers to neutralize the tree's defenses and bring all the humans back to life. The part of this death that made me cry was when Ash told Pikachu, I love you, and left Pikachu crying. Come on, Pikachu. You know the writers won't do you like that? Even though they did you real dirty in the I Choose You movie. This next death is the most heartbreaking death because it even traumatized Pikachu up to the point that it spoke words that were not Pika Pika P. This movie played out the same way the very first episode of the series played out and then the story developed into a quest to seek out the legendary Ho-Oh. In his quest, Ash raised an abandoned Charmander from Caterpie to Butterfree and then released it to follow its heart. But when Ash got so close to his goal, he got sabotaged by Cross, Charmander's former trainer. Cross's carelessness and cold heart then caused Marshadow, a mythical Pokemon with concentrated black air force energy to emerge. Marshadow wasn't even ready to hear any explanations. He just started blasting and confessing every Pokemon it could destroy to Ash. This scene before his death gave me goosebumps. The good kind of goosebumps. Ash put his cap back, struck a pose and said, Now you look. I don't think you know who you're dealing with. I'm Ash Ketchum from Pallet Town. And I'm gonna be the world's greatest Pokemon master! Mess with me and you're gonna lose! And the confessed Pokemon were like, all right, bet, and blasted him to smithereens. The force from this blast was so strong, Ash heard Pikachu talk. That first blast wasn't enough, so the Pokemon blasted Ash again, but this time they sent both his body and his soul into the afterlife. This just made Pikachu very angry and despaired, so he yelled and emitted a colossal thunderbolt attack, sending Marshadow and its army flying, releasing them from Marshadow's confession. Pikachu's cry was so loud, Ash heard it from the afterlife. So he started running, and Pikachu jumped through a special portal, courtesy of Ho-Oh, to save Ash from the underworld. Let's pause for a second and talk about the Pikachu talking scene. It really caught me off guard, but I believe the idea behind it was that Ash was hallucinating Pikachu speaking human language, whereas it was just saying, Pika Pika P. Another explanation for that could be Ash was just visualizing what he believed Pikachu said, or the trauma was just too much for poor Pikachu. It had to learn human language. But you know what really baffles me about this death? The fact that after Ash got back from the land of the dead, he challenged Ho-Oh to a battle. That's just crazy, but not as crazy as the time he died of natural causes. In the movie, Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea, Ash and his squad got lost before they met this girl, Elizabeth, and her family who were disguising as performers, but in reality were secretly protecting and transporting a Manaphy egg to a legendary sea temple with the help of the Pokemon Ranger, Jackie. While they transported it, this greedy pirate, Phantom, stalked them mercilessly, all because he wanted to steal the priceless sea crown. You know how it goes, Ash and his gang get involved and save the day. Except this time, Ash died saving the day again. See, Samiya, the legendary sea temple in question, got unstable after Phantom's interference. So to save the temple, Ash and May had to collect its crystals and put them back where they belong. In an effort to return the last one, Ash had to swim way, way down below because for some reason, reason, the castle was sinking. Ash went for it the first time, but wasn't able to insert it where it belonged, and it slipped from his grasp. But that did not stop him. The second time, Ash heroically dived to retrieve the crystal from where it got stuck and return it. So he used up all of his air and energy trying to free the stuck crystal from the little nut. He successfully freed the crystal, but that was when he fell unconscious and started drowning while the crystal fell even deeper into the depths of the temple. Rest in peace, Ash. Sigh. Please tell me you didn't believe the writers would kill off Asher without any plans to bring him back from the dead. See?
See, Pokemon didn't need to cry, Pikachu didn't need to yell, nor did Victini need to use Searing Shot to revive Ash. All that was needed was for Manaphy to use Telepathy. Manaphy placed one tentacle on May's head and another on the tank to somehow transmit May's thoughts through the tank and through the fast amounts of water between them to Ash, waking Ash up from the dead and prompting him to swim to the surface and get a breath. Manaphy basically used Heart Swap to give Ash a lifeline and special powers. This can't be real. But then again, is Ash even real? There is this theory about Ash that I can't seem to shake off my mind. Do you remember the second death I covered in this video? The one where Ash and Pikachu died after they got crushed by a chandelier and got electrocuted to death? Yeah, that one. There is a theory that says Ash and Pikachu are still ghosts that are just living in their bodies. First of all, aren't we all? But then again, that theory low-key makes sense if you consider the number of times that Ash has died and come back to life, especially also considering the fact that this is the very first time he died in the Pokemon timeline, and it is the only death that is considered canon. If you think about it, it makes sense that Ash would just run into Mew and Mewtwo's attacks and Mewtwo strikes back and get turned into stone. Could it be because he knew he would survive no matter what? Anywho, the Pokemon movies have a thing for doing fake out pseudo deaths, but it really stings when a character in Pokemon dies and stays that way. But not for Ash. Never for Ash. I guess it's safe to say, legends never die. OMG look! Ash is about to get electrocuted by Pikachu! Click this video to save him from Pikachu just this one time! Come on, do it!